Hi there, friend. Heidi Black here. And this message is really unlike anything I've ever done before. Um, it is the story and, and really my testimony, my personal testimony of my relationship with Jesus Christ and what that has meant to me and to my family and the restoration, the healing, the, um, the miracle that's come from that. And this story didn't begin just recently. I didn't just make a decision. In fact, what I want you to hear is I think for a lot of us, we grow up in the church or in a, in a home where there's some form of, of religion or God is talked about. And let me be clear, I'm, I do not believe that there are multiple ways to get to heaven. I don't believe there are multiple gods. Um, I know for myself that I've been down numerous roads and paths in terms of uh, seeking more worldly ways to feel worthy and feel like my identity is in something and you will hit a brick wall <laughs> every single time. Maybe for a little while you'll, you'll create a level of success or peace or something, but it will be very short lived. And I can speak to that because, you know, I became a Christian. I made a personal decision for when I was 12 years old at summer camp. And, you know, at the time it was, it was very intentional. I was aware of what I was deciding and I was raised in a church home, but there was a lot of confusion. You know, my, both my parents, I think, had their own reasons for being confused about the church, and that's not uncommon. Um, you know, as we become adults, we've got to make decisions for ourselves in every area of our life, regardless of what we were raised with and, and what, uh, you know, certain mindset we were, we were kind of given and, and groomed with. Uh, we get to decide. So, you know, I got married young. I got married when I was 20 years old. I'll be 35 this year, so married almost 15 years. And while my um, my husband is the greatest blessing in my life, because I came into our marriage with a lot of confusion around around commitment and around um, around what it means to be married. I just for various reasons, had a lot of confused and messed up views of what that meant. Um, for a number of years in our marriage, I caused my husband a lot of pain. And I share this because I know it's not uncommon uh, between men or women. You know, uh, relationships outside of marriage and just activities and choices that people make, you're not, you're not only hurting yourself, in your marriage and you know there and and your children if you have children um you know there's a lot more the collateral damage of that is is felt and you know biblically if you read up on it you know generationally there is stuff and and I know for myself now having dealt with a lot of this that 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 was a factor of some things that I wasn't aware of in in my you know generationally that I had to really break with and and um so I, I share this because what I know is being in business for 15 years also, I, you know, I've done a lot of personal growth. I've hired a lot of coaches and trainers and been to a lot of events. And there's a very slippery slope that in the world of, of business period, you know, as an entrepreneur, we're, 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 we talk a lot about personal growth and development, feeding your mind with information that comes from a source that is not absolute truth. I know this because I've been down this path a few times, really seeking wisdom, and it was worldly wisdom. And what happens is it's very much a, what do I want? What do I want? Well, hey, if you ask yourself, what do you want? Ask yourself, you know, what, what do I want? If there's no filter on that and no, and, and you're not really thinking about the, the legacy that you're creating and what you want for, for, for forever, what do I want right now? In this moment, what would feel great? What do I want? Okay, the reality of that is if we answer that just, again, in our sinful nature and, and just in our very selfish places that we tend to be, I just, I know where, where that has taken me and it's not a pretty place. And I encourage you to, you know, to consider what, what are the sources of information you're allowing to speak into your life? You know, for me, I can speak that there are certain very worldly authors and speakers and trainers and coaches that will 
make it seem like they have the answer and create for you a false sense of of you figuring out who you are and at the end of that you may for a time feel like you know feel amazing and feel like you've got it all figured out there is there is not a lot of depth and substance to that suddenly you find yourself making decisions that you don't even recognize yourself anymore because you've gone so down the, the so far down the path of what what do I want what makes me feel good what do I want well, you visualize what your life looks like and suddenly you don't recognize yourself anymore and not in a positive way I don't know about you but you know to get to the end and to be successful in something and make a bunch of money and and to be recognized for a bunch of stuff you know I've, I've had a lot of those things and it doesn't feel very good when you don't like who you are and for me my personal relationship with Jesus when it was only just a few years ago I really got clarity my husband and I actually hit I, I hit a very rock bottom place and our marriage our family we have you know two little boys now and at the time they were just little babies little toddlers I was at a rock bottom place and I didn't want to be married anymore and you know it's hard to say that because my husband and I have kind of built our brand and our company on 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 family and on this whole idea of you know expose your potential is it's it's about thriving in every area and we were anything but that we I, I felt like a fraud and we chose to take a class called biblical entrepreneurship really for us it, it had so much more to do with turning our world right side up and what what does that actually mean to be a biblical a kingdom entrepreneur uh, you know I think Prior to that, I didn't know really, I didn't have awareness of the Holy Spirit. I'd, I'd heard of, you know, an analogy a friend of mine talks about, you know, we have Father, Son, and Holy Bible, right? And the Bible is, is an active, living Bible. But unless you're aware of the access and the authority you have in Jesus' name, you won't even, you won't even go there because you just don't even realize what you have access to. So for me... As I really became clear from that very dead, selfish, uh, very hard place that years ago now, just several years ago, um, we went through this course and it was the beginning of really getting some clarity on turning our world right side up in every way, about doing things God's way. And let me be clear, even when you make a decision for Christ, it does, doesn't suddenly mean life is easy and you're never, don't ever think you're immune. No matter who you are, no matter what you do, you are not immune. And, and that's why, you know, we have the need. We were created with a, a heart-shaped hole in our heart, you know, it, literally a need for a Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why he died on the cross for you and for me. But it's a decision that has to be made, and not only once. You know, my husband just read a book called um, the, the Grave Robber, and it gives a beautiful analogy of when Jesus died on the cross, he, you know, he, he was wrapped in, in like kind of like a mummy, I guess, and, and they wrapped the body, they put him in the tomb, and when he came out, when he rose, you know, when, a, when he rose from the dead, he he was alive but then he had to remove the kind of the mummy like garment from his body and that's that's the picture of we make a decision to follow Christ to, to have Jesus as our personal Savior and that's the 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 raising from the dead I guess in a sense our life our our spirit is risen from the death and and sin and, and destruction of the world but then we've got to actually remove, we've got to take off the old self. And that's this picture of removing that mummy-like garment. And um, that that is a daily choice. We've got to daily make the decision that we're going to look different and live differently. And what we listen to and what we put in and what we choose to focus on is different. It's not a one-time decision and suddenly life is different. What I know is that making an active decision and a daily choice to to 
to to follow Christ. You know, there there were even windows of times in the last few years after making that definite decision that when it's easy to just it, it's like in our health, it's like in any any relationship, anything in our lives, in our job, in our you know, we can kind of get comfortable and we start to coast and we start to go when we're not growing, we are moving backward. Okay? So if you're not actively surrounding yourself with people that are encouraging you in the ways that you want to go, you are going to go the other the other direction. It just it seems common sense, but we're just a lot of us are thick-headed and we just kind of we think I got this. Uh, you know, I'm strong enough in my own strength to do this. No, <laughs> that's not true, I promise you. So again, what I know and what I can tell you is that a personal relationship with Jesus is not suddenly going to change everything, but it also is going to suddenly change everything. You have access to a power and authority that is not of this world, that gives you access to everything that you require to have such peace, such joy, such absolute, just, it, it's it's something that you can't really comprehend and understand. And even if you are a believer, if you've not stepped into the fullness of what you have access to, you're really missing out. The Bible is an active, it's living, you know, it's a God's living word. And if you will choose to engage and choose to seek him and ask him and connect with others and be in fellowship and worship and there is so much to that that is so much more meaningful than any accomplishment on this side of life. <laughs> so who am I? I'm a child of God. I'm a committed wife. I'm a loving mother. I'm an entrepreneur. And I am a lover of life and of people. And I'm just grateful for the opportunity that I had to share this with you. So thank you for taking the time to listen. I hope that you're encouraged. If you have any questions about what it means and, and how it looks, you know, to make a decision for yourself, it's just, it's a conversation, just like talking to anybody else, just letting God, you know, God, I know to this point, I, I've heard of you, maybe I even made a decision for you, but I've not been living for you, and I want that, I want that back in my life, I want to know what it looks like to have an active relationship with you. Just talk to him and ask him and let him know and make that conscious decision for yourself and reach out to me. If you made that decision or recommitted that decision, I'm so excited because I know that for for myself and many others that I've been blessed to work with, it is it's the decision, the, the most critical decision of your entire life. And it's one that you get to make daily to renew, renew your mind and continue to press in and allow him to guide you and lead you. I love you, and I appreciate you. I'll talk with you soon.